um i'm not sure if you guys remember but there was this article that came out uh maybe a few weeks ago maybe no not a few weeks ago maybe a few months ago when obviously covid was still raging in parts of europe more so than it was in southeast asia and uh the thailand gov the thailand tourism board basically put out this amazing editorial basically saying that hey if you want to we're basically opening up um, Thailand to um, foreigners to come and basically work remotely in it because obviously the world has changed post COVID. People are now, you know, more able to work from home. Companies are more willing to let their employees work remotely completely going forward. Loads of big tech companies are basically closing their offices and moving to more remote working um, schedule, which is allowing their employees to go work wherever they need to be. And a Thailand tourism board for is a good opportunity to sort of slip in and say, hey, we're open for business. Come here and work from the beginning um and of course to bolster their tourism and get people out there because you know no one's there now because for the most part most countries are you know um or most places that you kind of fly into thailand have obviously that mandatory quarantine thing so doesn't make the whole thing worthwhile but it looks like it hasn't worked this is a little roundup video from bloomberg it basically is saying the following um these aren't there aren't enough tourist arrivals to save the industry that used to contribute to one-fifth of thailand's economy thailand's opening experiment during covid19 hasn't gone to plan and rk writes this guy here randy um explains from beach destination of podcast so let's watch what he has to say here <clears throat> This is Patong Beach, which was one of the most popular beaches on the island before the pandemic. But looking at it now, it's almost deserted. Thailand has been closed to most visitors since late March, but is now starting to open its door to a small number of foreign visitors. The country has been doing experiments where they started accepting visitors on the condition. Randy's cute, huh? Randy's cute. That they need to go through a 14 day quarantine inside a hotel room. And that's because it wants to strike a balance between keeping infection risks low for people living in Thailand and allowing some visitors to help some of its tourism businesses. The problem, though, is that at the moment there aren't enough tourist arrivals to save the industry that used to contribute to about one fifth of Thailand's economy. Crazy, isn't it? How much tourism contributes to Thailand's economy, and just crazy in general how important uh, tourism is to most nations' GDP. Like it's just maddening, and obviously it must you know we just know how internationally connected we are. We are basically global citizens, even though it's a bit of a wanky term to use. But the reliance that these countries have with Eastern, with you know, uh, tourists coming from all over the world to visit their country is greatly been has been greatly sort of emphasized during this time of COVID. And one thing I've been wondering, I wonder if people's reluctance to go to Southeast Asia has anything to do with COVID. I wonder if this is kind of a odd xenophobic thing that's going to be um we might see ripple effects of going forward will like southeast asian companies ever rebound or countries ever rebound from this are there people out there who are purposely avoiding going to a southeast asian country because they fear getting covid in any short way or because of the demonization of the wet markets and stuff i wonder if that's a thing i'm sure I remember I remember a couple of times I heard somebody mention here in passing in the UK that they weren't ordering Chinese food, right? Because of COVID. And this was this was maybe around the summertime last year right when it was kind of everyone sort of uh, was fear mongering all over the place and people were panicking left right and center i haven't heard of that too much now going forward but i wonder if there's been i wonder if you if you was to interview somebody that owned an asian takeaway shop and ask them oh has there been a in, has there been a obvious decrease in terms of customers and changing of customers in general or losing of customers since COVID has struck um, even with the lockdown because I'm sure there's some people who are still supporting the local restaurants but I wonder if they can tell you yep I can definitely see a correlation between it and maybe this, they're just never going to survive off the back of this it'll be, it'll be horrible if so because Southeast Asia is flipping beautiful I've been to Bali um, and I really enjoyed my time there like I'd love to go back again very very soon but um yeah, I wonder if that's the case, if that's why people haven't gone or because if it's just primarily because of the um, long quarantine times are required to go. Who knows? Let's continue the video. A 
I just landed in Phuket and the airport is quite empty considering December is usually one of the busiest periods for the island. It's usually the time when European travelers would come to spend several weeks on the beach. Now it's mostly just domestic travelers who come here for that weekend trip. And how wonderful is it to live somewhere in the Pacifics where you can basically fly into Thailand for your winter break? Or for a weekend trip. How bloody beautiful. That's something I realized quite quickly when we went to Bali actually. Loads of Australians, loads of New Zealand's, New Zealand people would kind of hop over just to, for a short little weekend getaway, a little week getaway. And that was essentially their version of Ibiza or parts of Greece or Portugal or every place that we sort of kind of go and jump over when we were sort of looking for a weekend break. But god damn it, I'd probably swap them the other way around if I could. Turn right. This road just off Patong Beach used to be lined with restaurants and bars. Now most of the businesses are closed. Tourism is very important for Phuket where 90% of its economy depended on it. And foreign That's visitors crazy. contributed to the majority of those receipts. So without them, there's just not enough income for businesses. For our hotel, from last year, we are run operating uh, occupancy over 80 and 90 percent but when we compare right now uh, this month and next month we will have only 10 percent jesus christ imagine that drop off the occupancy rate during the same month last year was 80 to 90 and now it's 10 percent i've definitely heard that i think i heard from a couple of podcasts i listened to with stand-up comedians they mentioned that they went you know probably not allowed to go on tour and stuff in certain places you're not allowed to like, leave your state depending on the mandate but you don't do you have to do to put food on the table but i remember a couple of them mentioning that yeah when they checked into their hotels they were told by people at reception like they were the only ones staying on their floor sometimes or maybe in the entire hotel just imagine how mad that must be. You're flying into a major city. Of course, it's a major city because you're basically performing there. Um, and then you're staying in a very popular hotel, most likely. If you're, you know, you've got an agent and shit, they just hook you up with the most well-known and reliable hotel. And then you're going in there and you're the only one that's there because of a virus. Like, incredible. And then you just wonder, like, how do these places bounce back? Maybe they're getting gone for subsidies, but I just can't even try and wonder or speculate as to how a, a hotel of like that size you know 30 story 40 story whatever high it may be all these amenities in there how it's able to kind of function still as a business without having people coming in and paying per night or whatever it may be that they do like it's just mad in it and especially in southeast asia where a lot of the imagine for the workers this guy now spraying down the piece of the suitcase and stuff a lot of their money that they earn is basically through tips in it the people that pick up your car at the front, that take your luggage and shit. So all of that is effectively gone. Right now we have only Thai customers. Tourism businesses have said that mandatory quarantine is one of the key obstacles preventing visitors from coming to Thailand and they want it scrapped. They say that the majority of visitors that want to visit Thailand only stay for less than a week. So it's not practical for them to spend two weeks inside a hotel room during their vacation. But not everyone agrees with that proposal. A survey in October showed that the majority of Thais were against the tourism reopening plan. So the government has been trying to balance both sides, one pushing for a wider reopening for more tourists, and the other pushing for strict rules to minimize infection risks. And while it's true that once the majority of people got vaccinated, this debate of reopening with or without a quarantine will go away. The vaccine rollouts may take some time and many of the businesses may not be able to hold off that mm. long without income from foreign tourists. So when the island fully reopened again, some of those businesses may already be gone forever. <sighs> that's like, again, that is one of the, that's one of the things I don't envy about being somebody that's in office at the moment. Like, how do you balance those two things, right? The needs of the nation, you know, health-wise, and then also the needs of the nation when it comes to tourism and economy, especially places like Phuket and, you know, in Th Thailand in general, where most of the people that are basically contributing to your GDP don't live there. They just fly in for a weekend or two. But of course, you want to keep your, your population there healthy. And maybe this is the whole quagmire in place for people that are performing or putting on playgraves right they're usually doing them in countries like thailand where you can 
maybe I would say bribe but you can convince local officials here and there to allow you to do an event because they are hoping that by doing that event you're allowing the country to open up you're maybe showing tourist international visitors from all around the world that they can come and visit your place safely you're obviously putting money back in their pocket and in your pocket so there's a weird ethical moral thing at play where it's obviously in some places it's kind of legal to do these parties but then it obviously isn't maybe the right thing to do at this time given what's going on in the world but again maybe that's a situation for somebody else to sort of deal with but again a definitely a hard one to come to grips with